Meet Genevieve Joyce. Her grandmother Vivian recently passed away and left her a large parcel of land in Europe. Unfortunately for Genevieve, many members of the family are angry about grandma's decision. You see, Genevieve is the youngest of seven siblings. And while her six older brothers wished to use the land to build a casino or a racetrack, grandmother knew that Genevieve's dream was to build a zoo. As an animal lover herself, grandmother Vivian had begun writing up plans for a wildlife haven, and who better to succeed her than her own grandchild? So armed with a few scribbled blueprints and a desire to commemorate her grandmother, Genevieve sets out to bring her dream to life. Hey everyone, Spare here. Welcome to a brand new series on the channel. Thank you to everyone who voted on my community post saying that you would love to see another series. So here we are. However, it will not be a franchise series, it will be a challenge mode series. It is basically the same thing, it is just offline, so really the only difference will be the animal market and the fact that I can have more than one save because quite honestly, I get very anxious thinking about just having one save on franchises. So here we go. The series will be a little bit different than others. As you probably noticed in the beginning, I was using a bit of AI art to really bring the story to life. While I do have the skills to illustrate these characters myself, it would take way too long, so I will be using a little bit of AI to supplement. Um, but I do also want this to be a collaborative storytelling effort, so I have planned nothing past episode one, so I need you to tell me in the comments where you think the story should go next. So let's jump right in. The first thing we need to do is get rid of this default entrance building, so that'll give us a little bit of money. And I'm just gonna leave the guest spawners where they are for now, but I am going to move this entrance up so that we can build a custom entrance eventually. So I'm just gonna leave a little bit of room in front of it for something like a parking lot or a road. And then I will move these entrances up and a little bit off to the side. And now we just need to make sure that we have a path. All right, time to add some staff facilities. But before we do that, I'm just going to mark where we have our power because the entrance gates have their own power source. So we don't need to put anything down, which means we're saving money. So I'm just gonna quickly mark that with some soil. And then as you can see, that's how far our power stretches at the moment. So off to this side. I'm just going to place a few staff buildings. Staff facilities, uh, we will need a workshop and we will need a research center. We will need a keeper hut. We will also need an animal trade center and we will be needing a staff room. Um, don't need the vet center or the quarantine just yet because we are actually not going to be putting any habitat animals in today. So let's go hire some staff. The first thing I want to do is I want to set our mechanic, Antonio Garcia, to research one of the themes. I don't need all four levels. In fact, I really only need the first one if I want to use the building pieces. The other ones are just blueprints. So I'm going to set him to the classic theme so that we can get some fountain pieces. And the vet doesn't have any animals to research just yet, so let's find some in the Zoopedia. So I want the first exhibit in the zoo to be a butterfly exhibit, kind of a butterfly garden in memoriam of Grandmother Vivian. So we have five butterflies to choose from, and the cloudless sulfur and blue morpho are more South American species. This zoo is somewhere in temperate Europe, most likely Britain, so we're going to go with the European peacock, the monarch, and the old world swallowtail. It is a little bit of an upfront cost because the walkthrough exhibit does cost about $9,000, but I think that it will pay off in the long run because the butterflies breed a lot and they will make us lots of money.
Okay, and now that the butterflies are in, we can get our vet to start researching one of them, and then they'll be able to get all of the enrichment items that come with the exhibit so that we can make sure they're nice and settled. I'm also going to make sure that I'm managing the population. So I'm going to turn this on and I'm going to set the max for males to 10. Uh, no, let's do 15 of each. So store and trade center and we're gonna go by appeal lowest first so that we are making sure that we're keeping the high appeal ones in the exhibit to get more people here. Not that butterflies are particularly exciting in the grand scheme of things but this way they will at least also be breeding nicer butterflies as well. We should also make sure that this is ready for our guests. So we're going to make sure that we have some donation boxes set up once our guests start to arrive. And we'll make sure that it's not this ugly blue color. We're gonna go a darker brown with a lighter brown so it blends in a little bit more nicely into the surroundings. Some other things I guess we should have for our guests are some toilets. We'll put those just off to the side here for now. Pose an info booth would be a smart idea as well. We'll just add that to this group at the front here. As we wait for our vet research, let's do some more path work so that we can set up this area for our planting. And there we go. They've already had offspring. Look at that. We are under $20,000, but I have a feeling that we won't have to worry too, too much about money once these butterflies start selling. Our first vet research is complete, so I'm going to go into my enclosure or exhibit and then layout, and we're gonna add the nectar feeder, ripe fruits, and the sugar water dish. There are a few things I want to add from these levels, so we're just gonna speed up some time so that we can get all of that research done and then we can start planting up our garden. Let's check it out. Okay, only three more to go. One other thing that we could do to help with the money aspect is make sure that the bathroom is not free. That basically means it pays for itself. And I mean, we are in Europe, so this does happen quite a bit. So we'll just set it to 50 cents because that's when people won't complain about it. And then we're gonna keep fast forwarding so we can get those butterflies settled. Okay, let's see what else we can add now. We can add milkweed and Bidlea, and then we're going to leave the potted trees out because they're a little bit too tropical for my liking, and we'll be planting it up with other stuff anyway. But during the time lapse, you probably saw this little notification going off quite a bit, so let's go to our exhibit trading and look at all of these butterflies in our trade center just waiting to be sold off. So let's see how much that will net us. Three, three and a half grand, that's actually not bad. All right. Jin Chen has been hard at work on our European peacock species, so they are fully researched, which means we have access to all of the enrichment items, and I'm just going to set her to study the monarchs and the old world swallowtails as we continue working. So thanks, Imogen. 
as a reward, we're also gonna do a little bit of training for all of our staff to make sure that they're good at their jobs. Okay, last one in here. We're going to add our mister and then it looks like we just have tropical ferns. So we're going to leave those alone because we are not in a tropical place. During that research time, we also got so many more butterflies in the trade center. So I'm going to sell all of those. And between this and our last sale, the butterflies have already paid for themselves. So that's great. So the next thing we're going to do is going to plant up this area. It's going to be two big planters with the butterflies in the middle. And then we're also going to have planters on the outside. So I'm thinking, let's do Europe biome temperate and see what we've got in here. So here is basically our plant palette for this little garden section. We have the buffalo grass as our base, some dog rose bush, the white foxgloves, and then the gelder rose bush. Just something super neutral. I didn't want too much color because of the red pathway, which I guess could always change, but then we can always add more color. Uh, the creosote bushes, and then the cork oak tree and the London plane tree. So I'm just going to plant up that middle section.
one last thing today. I want to build a nice fountain right in the center here and our lovely mechanic Antonio has finished researching the classic theme so I'm going to use those pieces to do that. So there we go. That's all we've got for Whispering Woods today, our little front courtyard and our butterfly walkthrough enclosure. Next time we'll be building up the entrance, which I have a general idea for, but I want to know from you, which animal would you like to see in Whispering Woods next? Who are we going to hire onto our roster? Is Genevieve going to run into trouble with her family as she tries to prove herself? Let me know in the comments below, and I will see you next time. Bye.